Hi guys, in our last video, we looked at how you can get a free VMware Fusion Pro for your Mac. If you are interested in that, check out the video card at the top right corner. And in this one, we are going to continue from where we left off. We will proceed with installation and configuration of Windows 11 in VMware Fusion. Before we begin, if you like what you are watching, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. That would encourage me to create more such content like this one. And if you got any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. So let's get started. Here's a step-by-step -step instruction blog article on how you can install Windows 11 on VMware Fusion in Mac. I'll put the link in the description as well. So for those who wanted to follow the blog article, you may do so. This is what we will do in this video. We'll install the Windows 11 in VMware Fusion Pro. After the installation, we would then configure the VMware tools in it. And we would also change the default memory and CPU configuration so that you get a better performance along with some network changes as well. You know, that way you could RDP into your machine from your local area network. I hope you already have VMware Fusion installed and running. Open the VMware Fusion software by going to the system tray at the top right corner of your Mac machine. And click on create new virtual machine. Here we have multiple options create a custom virtual machine that would let you install any operating system using the ISO image but you need to ensure that this is a ARM based you may note one thing here I'm using a M series machine not an Intel machine so a M series chip is ARM based and it doesn't support x86 architecture so if you have an ISO image that is based on ARM based you should be good and another option we have is that get windows from Microsoft which we would be using it in this video you can also connect a virtual machine that is in the remote server as well which we don't want to do it right now choose get windows from microsoft and click on continue it's telling me about the workflow how it's gonna install the windows 11 if you'd like to know some known limitations running the windows 11 in fusion you may click here to learn more about it now everything is okay for me so i'm clicking on continue in the windows edition choose windows edition you would like i'm selecting the professional one here and the language of your choice and uh, click on download windows the vmware fusion would now go to the microsoft official page and download the windows 11 arm based iso image from there so you don't have to go manually and then download the software or anything as such the fusion itself will go and download the software for you that is a good thing the file is a bit big so it will take some time for it to download so you need to have some patience so let me fast forward it while it's doing it, let's talk about some of the prerequisites that have changed ever since the Windows 11 came out. Alright, so the first prerequisite is you must have a 4 GB of RAM, 2 CPU, which is okay, right? This is very common. And the important part, which many people didn't like it, is the secure boot and the TPM requirement. So interestingly, VMware Fusion does support both these requirements now. So we should be good on that part. Download is now complete. Create your Windows 11 ISO file. Windows 11 ISO created and placed at this location and I can now click on continue. So here it's asking you to choose a boot firmware. The only option we have is to choose from is um, UEFI and select UEFI secure boot and click on continue. Next we are going to configure the virtualized TPM for the Windows 11 machine. So we need to encrypt the VM files. So choose only the files needed to support a TPM or encrypted and enter the password and verify the password again. Make sure you make a note of this password somewhere, although it is saved in my keychain. It never asks for this password again while I'm using this virtual machine. I believe when you move this VM to another host machine, that time you might require to enter the same password to decrypt the files to enable the TPM back again. So enter the password, confirm the password and click on continue. In the choose a virtual disk option, choose create new virtual disk and click on continue. If you already have another virtual hard disk, that time you can choose use an existing virtual disk. But for the installation, we are creating a new virtual disk. So click on continue. Here's a summary of the virtual machine, 4 GB of memory and 2 CPU, which is fine for the virtual machine to run. However, I would want to increase it, which I will do later on. And if you don't have system resources, you may feel free to choose the default settings. I've seen some machines have only 8 GB of RAM so you may note that when you run the virtual machine it would take half of the RAM so be, please be mindful of that and click on finish if you want to change the VM name you can do that here 
and also the location I am leaving the default settings here and click on save the virtual machine is now created the VM is now booting I am getting a message press any key to boot from CD or DVD let me press any key Windows now booting into the installation wizard language time currency and keyboard looks good for me and click on next and install now setup is starting in the activate window screen choose i don't have a product key multiple versions of windows operating systems are now shown choose the one you like and choose windows 11 pro and click on next accept the license agreement and click on next choose custom install windows only choose the virtual hard disk and click on next the installation has now begun this would take few minutes let me fast forward it Installing features, installing updates, Windows needs restart to continue. So the operating system installation is complete. It will now take you to the initial setup wizard. Getting ready. We are at the initial setup wizard. By default, Microsoft will force you to use Microsoft account. But I prefer to choose local account instead. So if you prefer to use Microsoft account, you may proceed. But even if you create a local account now, you can connect to your Microsoft account later. So I would say just create a local account to begin with and then later you can connect the Microsoft account which I will show you how to do that. Before you make any selection, let's disable the connectivity to the internet. On the network settings icon, click on disconnect network adapter. The network is now disconnected. You may proceed with the initial setup wizard. Country is fine, click on yes and the keyboard layout is also fine. I don't want to add any extra keyboard layout. So I'm skipping that. Now on this screen, I can't proceed further because we don't have an internet, right? If you have an internet, the Microsoft will ask you to log in with the Microsoft account. Now, how do I set up the local account here? This is where we are going to force the Windows 11 to ask to create the local account, all right? So on your Mac, press Shift, Function, and the F10 key. This will open up the command prompt window. In the command prompt, enter O O O B E backslash bypass NRO and hit enter. This will restart the virtual machine. We are again back to the same screen. Select the region and the keyboard. Escape. Now I have an option that says I don't have an internet. Click on that. Continue with the limited setup. You can now create your local username and password. Enter the username and click on next. Enter password. Confirm password and you'll be asked to fill some security questions. Fill them as well. This might need it for the password recovery, you know, when you lose the password or something. Choose your privacy settings and click on next. So we have completed the Windows 11 installation and the initial configuration. After a few seconds, you will be taken to the Windows 11 desktop screen. Windows 11 installation is now complete. But you see on the bottom right corner, the internet is disconnected. Click on the network icon again and click on connect network adapter this time. After a few seconds, you will see the network is now connected. Let's now go ahead and install VMware tools. That is like an essential drivers for your virtual machine's performance. So click on virtual machine at the top left corner and click on install VMware tools. Click on install on the prompt. However, my installation didn't start automatically. So let me go to the file explorer and DVD drive. Double click on the setup to install the software. Click on continue and it, the installation would complete. And once it's completed, you may click on finish. It's now asking you to restart and click on yes. And we are back to the Windows desktop again. And if you are someone who want to connect to the Microsoft account, in the start menu, click on the username and click on change account settings. Here you can click on sign in with the Microsoft account instead option to connect the Microsoft account. And I'm now going to increase the memory and CPU of the virtual machine. Right click on start menu and click on task manager and click on performance tab. Here you can see I have two CPU cores. Let me switch to the memory and you can see I have four gigs of RAM and half of it is already being used. Let me close this. Let me shut down the VM, shut down, once shut down, click on the settings icon on the top and click on processors and memory, increase the processor to 4 processor cores, 
and memory to 8192 that will be 8 gigs as you can see even after giving the memory i still have 32 gigs left in my mac so i have plenty of ram so if your machine doesn't have that much of resources or maybe running with 8 gb of ram it is better to stick with 4 gb of ram for the virtual machine close the window and power on the virtual machine login let's now check the resources again go to task manager right click and task manager and in the performance you now have 8 gb of ram which is good and in the cpu i have four cpu cores we have now upgraded the performance of the virtual machine but what if you want to RDP into the machine from another device from the LAN? You have to just enable RDP, right? No, with just RDP settings enabled, you can RDP from the host machine. However, from the other users in the LAN will not be able to RDP into it. For example, your iPad or your TV, if you would like to RDP into the system, you may not be able to do it. Because we are using default NAT settings on the network. So if I go to CMD and type IP config, I have an IP address 192.168.31.129 from my VMware NAT DHCP service. So others in your LAN network doesn't have any clue about this network 192.168.31.0/24. So if they wanted to talk to your virtual machine, the easiest way is to use bridge interface. So let me switch to bridge interface. Hold on. What is this NAT network, bridge network and all that? Don't worry, I have created a separate video covering the VMware network types in details. So click on the video link at the top right corner to watch the video, which will help you identify what network to choose from in different scenarios. I also have this blog article that covers the same topic, which I will link in the description below. So to switch the bridge interface in the network at the top, and I choose bridged, we have selected the bridge interface now. And after a few seconds, you can see that I have internet access. Great. And let me check the IP config again. IP config. As you can see, I got an IP address 192.168.1.249 from my local area network. Now I'm going to enable the RDP service in Windows 11. So click on start and settings. Go to system. Scroll down to the remote desktop. And enable the remote desktop here. And confirm now let me add users to the RDP so that the users will be able to RDP into the machine and click on remote desktop users and click on add enter the username and check names my username is selected and click on ok ok again that's it we have enabled the RDP you can now access the Windows 11 machine from your local area network let me switch to my iPad in that open remote desktop app from Microsoft. If you don't have it, you can install it from the App Store. You can test this from other machines as well where you have RDP in it. Tap on Add PC to add new Windows 11 virtual machine. In the hostname or IP field, enter the IP address 192.168.1.249. I'll also add the username and save. Save again. Tap on the newly added computer in remote desktop. It's asking for password and the virtual machine password here. And here you go. We are now in Windows 11 virtual machine that we just installed in VMware Fusion. Let me close all the windows. Everything looks good. Let me open paint just for fun. And as you can see, I can now draw things here. Awesome. And that's it in this video, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you guys on the next one.